Charlene, our next uh, candidate is a uh, candidate for council. No, I'm running for mayor. Or me, Jason Ross. Okay, well, there we go. <laughs> my bad, and my apologies. Uh, we're, you know, being too brief here. A candidate for mayor. There we go. I think we'll all remember that one. Jason Ross for mayor. Where are you going? Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm an IT professional and uh, videographer, and I've been uh, watching the city of Victoria as well as the Arms Cows in the region for the last uh, three, four years, and uh, I believe that I can bring a lot of change, in particular uh, opening up the city and increasing conversation. And uh, if I were elected, I'd like you to all come down and talk about this issue regularly, preferably once a month, uh, and try and really find short term productive targets to reach it and solve this problem as quickly as we can. Our <laughs> uh, next candidate for mayor is Jason Ross, and I'm just going to make a habit of repeating the question. If elected, specifically, what will you do to encourage private development of rental housing at the low end of the market? Uh, let's see, first off, uh, this is obviously not my expertise area. I am an IT person, as I said, by trade. Uh, but I am an eager learner, and I kind of wish this whole meeting was actually turned around and I could listen to you guys talk. Um, and you, you will. I uh, will at some point. Um, but I'd like to find out more, and I think that's one of the first things I'd like to do if I was um, mayor of the city, is, is to actually have start it as a learning point. I'd like to start learning about everything that we do and have presentations and people to discuss, and I'd like to bring in not just the, the organizations, the, you know, the wonderful organizations in the city, but from afar as well. I don't believe in reinventing the wheel, and, and I think there's lots of good ideas out there, like um, what I was reading about was in the West End of Vancouver, where they have issues with a lot of vacancies, a lot of people who have who don't live in these places, but they, they own these properties, and they're not there most of the year. And I think if you increase taxes for them, you discourage developers from developing that type of property, and you allow more diversity and, and people actually living in the properties, it helps not just the people living, but the communities as well, and business. Thank you very much, Jason. Now, the next candidate for... So I guess we're doing a little bit of a post-mortem on the uh, first all-candidates meeting. Um, yeah, it was at the Kool-Aid Society or the Downtown Community Center, I guess it is. Um, but put, sponsored by the Kool-Aid Society and our place and the Greater Victoria Coalition, Coalition, Coalition and, and Homelessness. Yeah. So that was mostly the focus of the meeting was talking about homelessness and substance abuse issues and whatnot. What did you learn for yourself at the debate? Um, I learned that there was some really—it's uh, a subject, well, subjects that I, I think I'd like to dig more into now. It's something like both homelessness and affordable housing and and substance abuse and all the social issues surrounding poverty. Um, in all the years that I've been following council, there actually hasn't been a whole lot of information brought before council about this sort of stuff and it certainly hasn't been much discussion and mostly it's lip service to say oh we want to support this stuff and we're going to put money towards this or that but it's not i mean you have the same problems that i, I pointed out with council in general is that there's not really a lot of short-term goals there aren't really there's not a lot of monitoring of of the process and certainly focus yeah it's not focused it's just kind of wishful thinking and money thrown in general directions without a lot of thought towards how it gets spent or whether the approaches we're doing are the best. Well, and I think there also ought to be references to other communities that are tackling the same problem and good or bad ideas that they've had and, and how the Victoria's learned from them or other ideas that Victoria's had that other cities have copied. You know, like that's a big part of municipal governments. That municipal governments aren't—they aren't dealing with unique ideas. Everybody's dealing with this. Thousands of cities over the world are dealing with the same issues, and um, we shouldn't be building these, you know, working on these problems in isolation. We should be partnering a lot more. There ought to be a lot more intermunicipal uh, cooperation, both locally and large, you know, larger levels at provincial or federal or even global issues. For sure. So looking forward to the next debate, what are you going to do differently so that you make more of an impact? Um, well, and that was one of the disappointing. Let's go back to the structure of the meeting because the, the biggest issues I had with the meeting was the way it was structured. You had um, 
what was it, about 16 councillors and eight mayoral candidates. So 24 people at the table. Um, if you, and it was a two hour window of talking. So that means if, if everybody had their fair share of speaking, um, each person would get about four minutes of talking time. And that's not how it went at all. Um, I had a 30 second intro and a one minute response to one prepared question. Um, I didn't get a single direct question and this is where the moderator really fell down. Uh, the best moderators I've seen, I've, I've, I've probably been to about 15 all candidates meetings um, and at this point and 15 or 20 actually and the best moderators are the ones that are keeping track of who's getting asked questions and if certain candidates are getting repeated questions directed towards them they steer the question or even if the question wants to ask the, you know, the person who's already had six questions uh, the, another question, they tell them, no, we want you to ask this person or, or pick somebody who hasn't had a question yet or even uh, say, here's two people who haven't had questions to so let them both answer the question and that didn't happen. So I didn't get a single direct question from any public members and I basically had, th uh, you know, 90 seconds worth of speaking time for two hours. You know, that's not really a fair meeting um, and I'm not the only one. Uh, Basically, Ben, did anybody as a counselor other than Ben get questions? He got like Marianne two or three. Marianne got one question. Marianne got a question. Who else? Did anybody else? Charlene, Charlene but she did, wasn't really directed towards yeah, her. She's, yeah, Lisa got like one, and then Dean got a whole bunch. Dean got a whole bunch, and the this reporter Dean guy, guy. Stephen, what's his name? Andrews. Andrews, he got a whole bunch of questions. Uh, Ida got one, I think, or maybe two. Yeah, but she didn't answer it. And then Lisa got one yeah. or two. So a few of the mayoral candidates got a handful. Dean and Stephen got the vast majority of questions, and almost everybody else got nothing. And that's not that's not a, a well-structured meeting. It's not letting the public hear everybody's views. Uh, I mean, like I said, I think the only things I really can take out of it is it's going to be a weird, crazy election just due to some of the candidates on the mayoral ticket, at least. <laughs> um, between, you know, David Shabib and, um, what's Riga. the, Re, Riga and the clown, um, who's the most, of the three of them is, got, you know, is actually the most serious of the three as candidates. But they're just disruptive, especially Riga. She was disruptive the whole meeting. And Shabib just left. <laughs> you know, weird. Thank you. 